There has been so much talk this week about Antonio Conte. Now, I'm not doing this video in any sort of disrespectful way towards Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who is our current manager, but Man United might not be able to look further than six feet in front of their own face, but you know my opinion on these three games that Solskjaer has been given to save his United career. I think the United board are hanging Solskjaer out to dry. I think they've already made their mind up and they're already planning for life without Solskjaer. So what I'm going to do in a series of videos, starting with this one, is take a look at managers who could potentially be coming in in the coming weeks, coming months, whenever it is. I think it's going to be in, in the international break and I stand firm on that. I might be wrong and if I am wrong, fair enough. But I want to take a look at Conte. I want to take a look at his tactics, his style, the formation we could expect and the starting eleven that maybe he could come in and have at United. There's been so much Conte talk, it'll be foolish of me not to have this discussion with you. I'm going to do it objectively, not really throwing my opinions in, just kind of look at the facts of what he did with Inter Milan and Chelsea and apply that to this United squad and hopefully give us all a better understanding of what maybe we could expect if Conte did come in. So please drop a like on the video. Please subscribe if you would to United People's TV. But let's take a look at Conte and his tactics. And let's start by taking a look at that team that Inter Milan won the title with under Conte. You can see Handanovic in goal here. Three ball playing centre-backs there in Bastoni, De Vrij and Skriniar. With a sort of a deeper line playmaker in Brozovic in behind two sort of ball playing more aggressive central midfielders. And that was Eriksen and Barella at Inter Milan. Of course, the key factor, uh, sort of um, the, I don't know, the most identifiable part of a Conte team is the win backs. And here at Inter Milan, he had Perisic and Hakimi. And he had two centre forwards in Latoro, Martinez, and of course, Romelu Lukaku. Now, Conte, he played a 3-4-3 with Chelsea in that year, 2016-17, I think it was. Started off with a 4-2-3-1 famously against Arsenal in the 3-0 before switching it to a 4, as I said, that 3-4-3. And it worked. Victor Moses as the, as the wing back. And it worked. And will Conte adopt that formation at United? I would absolutely expect him to play that 3-5-2. Three, three centre-backs, two wing backs, a sort of deeper lying playmaker with two ball playing midfielders in front of him and two centre-forwards. Now, it's important to look at this discuss this and see where Manchester United's current squad fits into that style. And let's look at that back five defense and also the goalkeeper as well. There's lots of questions. There's lots of things to discuss here. Obviously, it's De Gea in goal. And if you're looking at the three center backs, you're probably looking at Lindelof, Maguire and Varane. Now, of course, you could potentially play Shaw as the third left center back. He has played there, played quite well there, actually, for Manchester United whenever we played a 3-5-2 under Solskjaer. And maybe Tellez as the, as the sort of wing back aggressively on the left hand side. But for me, the real question about anything to do with that back five is around Aaron Wambasaka for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's because Aaron Wambasaka, we know, doesn't have that natural attacking game. And the wing backs in the Conte system, that's where the width comes from. It's really important that they support the attack, they give the width, they give the shape, and they also drop back and help defensively. Now, we know that Wambasaka will do that very well defensively. But the reason that I would say there's more questions about wan isn't necessarily about wan Because what about Jadon Sancho? I know it's a rogue move here, me putting Jadon Sancho as right wing back. Selling a 73 million winger and you play him as a right wing back. I would say Sancho is a player who doesn't really fit that Conte system. There's no real width in the attack. The only width that we're going to get is going to be from the fullbacks. So if Sancho is going to fit in this system, maybe the only way that he fits in that Conte system is at right wing back. And you can go an even further curve where you could play right wing back and was very successful for Chelsea. So I would say that's the biggest question about this formation overall is that right wing back position. Sure, I can see succeeding there as a, as a left wing back. I could see Shaw succeeding as a left centre back behind, sorry, alongside Maguire and Varane instead of Lindelof. But Lindelof's a very good ball playing centre back. So it would kind of suit the Conte system. But right wing back, I would say is the biggest question that I'm not really sure what would happen there. I would say that's probably the only place that Sancho is going to really start in that team. So let me know what you think about that. But moving on from the defense. And as I said, Conte is somebody who gets labeled as a massively purely defensive coach. Now, there's no doubt that he's at me. He's Italian schooled. He knows about defense. He's very organized, very disciplined as a manager. And there's no doubt that his defense is very good in shape. But Conte has scored more goals in that season in 2016-17 than Pretty, every single United team in Premier League history, apart from two under Fergie, that they can score goals too. So it's not like he's a purely defensive manager. It's just that that's the sort of his go-to. 
and he likes to hit on the counter attack. But looking in midfield, there's more questions here to be asked. We're looking at that deeper line playmaker. Now, the, the two players in front of him, that's quite obvious. That's going to be Paul Pogba and Bruno Fernandes. Judging by this current squad, I'm not talking about what could happen in January with players leaving, Donny van der Beek with Paul Pogba. There's, I'm talking about what we've got right now because this is purely hypothetical, ladies and gents. I'm just looking at the managers we're being linked with and how their systems and styles could fit this current squad. And Paul Pogba and Fernandes there, it makes perfect sense. It was Ericsson and Barella at Inter Milan. It was um, Matic and Kante at Chelsea, although it was a 3-4-3, three, three, slightly different, but basically the same thing. Depending, you can, I think 3-4-3 three, three can effectively be similar. I know players when they had Hazard, actually, it's a little bit different up front. Maybe with a little bit more width. But it's going to be Pogba and it's going to be Fernandes. Now, Pogba obviously thrived under Conte at Juve when Conte won three titles, I believe, with Juve. Um, Pogba will play in that left central midfield position. It's actually the best position for Paul Pogba. So if you're looking at a player that's going to benefit from Conte, Pogba's probably the player who would benefit the most. Probably we would, we would find that sort of Juve version of Pogba that we always wanted. Now, Bruno Fernandes, again, this formation would suit him very, very well. So I think it suits both of them well. But again, just like it was the biggest question under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, it will be the biggest question underneath Conte in terms of the holes in the squad, in terms of that Deeper lying playmaker. As you can see, I've written down options here. You've got Fred, you've got Matic, you've got Van der Beek, you've got Matomane. Um, Matic, is he the most likely there because he's played with Conte before? Conte knows him, Conte trusts him, and in this situation, you probably fall to a player you trusted and didn't know about if you're going to be looking at compromises. Van der Beek, he's always said he could play that number six role. Could he play that on his own? But it depends whether you see this person as someone who's operating more as a deeper. And obviously, if you're looking at play teams that Conte's had, he had De Rossi when he, I think he was the Italian national manager, he had Perlo there. They're not necessarily, uh, you know, breakup players, if you know what I mean. They're not going to be like a pure and DD type player. They're deeper lying playmakers. So someone like Van der Beek, maybe they, he could finally suit and sit into that role. Wouldn't really suit McTominay that much. He wouldn't benefit from this formation, I don't think, too much under Conte. I'm not sure he would start either. Fred, again, the same thing. I'm not sure how much game time he would get. I would probably hesitate to say it would be Matic that would play in that role. But again, just like under Solskjaer, it's that position where there's so much compromise. And now the big, another big, as I said, there's questions everywhere with this Conte team. That's why it's it's a big argument and a big debate. But I, I wanted to do this video to sort of get, even to help me, get a bigger, a bigger and better understanding of what could this United team look like if Conte did come in. And if that's going to be the sort of the back five, and that's going to be the midfield, what happens up front? Because we're stacked up front, man. You're looking at who we've got. We've got Ronaldo. We've got Rashford. We've got Cavani. We've got Greenwood. We've got Martial. I've had to put. I've basically had to shoehorn Sancho in as a right wing back to get him in the starting eleven. Although I'll be honest, that they might go down as wing backs, but they really aggressively do play as wingers quite a lot of time under Conte. They're not really deep lying wing backs, but Sancho would certainly have to do a lot of tracking, no doubt. But up front, I've gone for Rashford and Ronaldo. Now, what do you think about this? As I said, uh, Inter Milan, he had uh, Martinez and Lukaku last season, and they worked and complemented each other very, very well. And they hit on the counter-attack. Counter-attacks are a big part of Conte's team. I believe no team scored more counter-attack goals in that season that Inter won the league, the title than Inter Milan. I think they scored three more than anyone else. Nine over the season. Counter-attacks are a big part of their game. Will certainly suit Rashford. Will certainly suit... Uh, yeah, will suit Ronaldo. He's got the pace for it. Um, but then... Who misses out? And what I want to do here is, look, if, if this is going to be the team that I would say is, a, is a most likely under Conte, we're looking at De Gea there, looking at Lindelof, Maguire and Varane, we're looking at, I've got Wan-Bissaka down here, but as I said, there's question marks about whether that's going to be Wan-Bissaka or it, whether it would be Sancho or whether it could even be Lingard. There's more questions about that right wing back position than anywhere else. And sure on the left, whether or not he plays a third centre back, or that left wing back. Again, there's questions there too. I've gone for Matic, Pobre and Fernandez. Um, Matic is obviously the biggest question. I wouldn't. I would say Pobre and Fernandez. They're certs. They're definites in those positions, and it's actually the position that that is the best for both of them. I would say it's what we've all wanted to see at Manchester United, but we've never. It's never really worked under Solskjaer. Now up front, we've got Rashford and Ronaldo. But if you're looking at the team that's not involved in this, take a look at this second eleven. There, you've got Cavani, Martial. They could be playing up front. You've got Greenwood, Sancho, I put up front there. You've got Van der Beek and Matter in midfield. You've got McTominay, Lingard there. You've got Fred, 
You've got Tellers on the left wing back. You've got Delot on the right wing back. You've got Bai. You've got Jones. And I don't really know. They're kind of running out of centre backs there. And then Henderson. There's a lot of players there. I would say out of all the squad, the player who probably wouldn't get a sniff in is Ahmad. But I don't think he was really going to get a sniff in under Solskjaer either. I think he's going to be going out on loan finally. Hopefully, I think it's to Feyenoord in January where he should have been going in the summer if it wasn't for an injury. But what do you think about Conte's overall team? As I said, go back to that 11 there that I've just mentioned there. What would you say if that was the starting 11 under Conte if he came into Manchester United? Would that be a team that you'd be happy with? What would you say would be the weaknesses? As I said, tactically, you're looking at the width of the fullbacks, the wingbacks, sorry, being a crucial part. It's such a, a, a massive element of Conte's style. They overlap and they overload on the, on the wings to bring the real width when going forward, but also they aggressively press back and sit in shape to drop into the 5-3-2 shape. And that's what Conte's teams do. Very disciplined, but also very hard and fast on the counter-attack. So players like Bruno Fernandes, if he dropped a little bit deeper, uh, to sort of that, that's what the deeper line playmaker is for. That's why they're so important to, to start those counter attacks from a little bit deeper rather than waiting for the ball to get up to Pogba or Fernandez. It's someone like Perlo or De Rossi who's sitting a little bit closer to the defense who can get that ball over the top for the two attackers, which in this 11 would be Rashford and Ronaldo to, to latch onto. As I said, I wanted to be as objective as possible in doing this video. This isn't a video designed with an opinion about whether Conte would be right or not. It's more just to look at the style, the tactics, the formation, and importantly, the starting 11 that could happen if he was to come in. As I said, I'm not doing this video in a sort of disrespectful way towards Solskjaer. I'm doing this video because I feel pretty firmly that Manchester United are taking the piss out of Solskjaer now. And the only reason he's still got a job is because the plan haven't, hasn't been put in place as to life after Solskjaer. And that's what currently is being planned. And that's the only reason he's got another three games. I hope to God that we get three wins and he can get the perfect send-off. Because in my opinion, I think he'll be sacked regardless of those three results. And if Conte is going to be the manager that we're getting heavily linked with the most, it'll be foolish of me not to just take a look at what he could do with this United team if he did come in. So that's the 11 I would go for. I would expect maybe, not go for, expect under Conte. As I said, you could see Sancho down there as right wing back. You could see Lingard there as right wing back. You could see Shaw there as left wing back. You could see you could see Tellez there as left wing back and then Shaw as a third centre back. There's options, there's questions. Where are your concerns about that team? Which players would you fear for the most? Which players do you think that will be frozen out under Conte? Because it's the same with any manager coming in, whether it's Conte, Ten Hag, Zidane, Rodgers, anybody else. There's going to be certain players that are frozen out. Which ones do you fear for most under Conte and why? You let me know in the comments below. As I said, I intend to do this video also and discuss Zidane. I also intend to discuss Ten Hag. If there's any other managers you'd like me to take a look at as well, you let me know in the comments. But please, if you did enjoy the video and it did help you understand a little bit about Conte, think about subscribing to United People's TV. Take it easy.